Hey, Scott from Aristocop.com here. And Seth from SethMarkwood.com. And we're happy to see you. Happy New Year. And uh, together, along with you and us, we're Markwood Ben's Breakfast Club. Welcome back once again. Good morning, boy. Oh, good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. It's been a while. It's, uh... It, hey, it's been less of a break than last year. Uh, by... By half, by, by more than by half. By a couple of months, actually. We uh, <laughs> we stopped filming Tobacco Advent about a month ago, about ex exactly a month ago. Um, we had you know about ten days worth of videos that I edited and rolled out uh, towards the end of the year, and so it's it's uh, a bit weird to be back. We both got the bug at about exactly the same time. The bug um, to get back to, to get back in, in front of you. And, and, <laughs> it's right. Uh, so it's a good time for it. That's really funny that that we did that because I, I sent him a message and said, hey. Uh, I'm interested in, uh, in in doing a Mark with Ben's Breakfast Club, meaning getting together for breakfast, and also doing a Mark with Ben's Breakfast Club. And, and and he replied right back, "Yeah, it's funny. I was thinking the same thing." Just so, told Allison yesterday, "Hey, we need to get back to film." So here we are. Right. So uh, let, let's get started yeah. loading the tobacco. Uh, you know, right after we finished recording, and right after we said, you know, hey, we got all that we need. Mm -hmm. We filmed, I think, 26 or 27 episodes. Yep. Yep. We got in the mail from our buddy Dan from Mexico, um, his tobacco advent contribution. So uh, sorry that we missed this, Dan, but uh, let's go ahead and smoke it. And as we said the, what he has to say about at the that. end of the year, um, we are going to, for the foreseeable future, be smoking the samples that were sent by uh, people who sent duplicate samples. Um, at the end of the year. So thank you everyone oh, for that. That's interesting. Merry Christmas! I realize that I'm kind of late to the game for Tobacco Advent, so don't feel any obligation to use this tobacco for Tobacco Advent this year. Last year was the first year for me participating in Tobacco Advent, and I think it's great fun. Last year I sent in two different tobacco blends, Clark's Blend, which Seth kindly renamed Churros, <laughs> an early morning pipe. By the way, I've officially gone with Seth's recommendation and have renamed that blend Churros. This Perfect. year I'm sending you Old Shenandoah Appalachian Berry. I really don't smoke a lot of aromatics anymore, but this is one that I still keep in my rotation. I will generally smoke this blend in particular amongst mixed company because of its sweet aroma. I hope you all enjoy this blend. Take care and God bless. Dan, Deep South Texas. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I'm smoking mine in my uh, Cobsby since, you know, we did that for oh, the Tobacco Advent. Fair play. Fair point. Yep. Here. Here's yours. And I'm <laughs> just... Because a smaller bowl, I had to, had to dump some of mine into your bowl. Oh, that's, okay. I, that's okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. All right. Thanks, Dan. That's fantastic. We appreciate that. Dan, I don't know if you even know this. Dan won the drawing from the people that uh, did VRs. Oh, cool. Over, uh, over well, the congratulations. Thank you so, for that as well. So by now, he should have his ugly sweater. Nice. Sweatshirt. <laughs> He should also have the coffee mug, and everybody who participated got a uh, Tobacco Advent 2018 coffee mug. Awesome. That has the, the sweater on it. The, the Christmas tree? Mm hmm. The mm. Sweater? The, uh, the, first the sweater one. sweater, yeah. The first one. I need to show you a picture of that at what, what we did. So it's really cold today in North Carolina. It's uh, outside. It is uh, 13. It's dropping down to tonight. But it's already down to freezing right now. When I came into the shop, it was 40 degrees. I came in about an hour and a half ago or so, got the fire going, got the heater going. And uh, I, we've explained this before. We're not in a basement. We're actually in a building that I rent that I have uh, my wood shop in. And we're in the very back room, what I would call the bench room. Um, gosh, this is not even a quarter of the size of the shop, um, but it's it's all a mess. Mm -hmm. You know, when we when we move, when my son-in-law moved, there's a there's a skateboard ramp mm -hmm. <laughs> in the other room in the way right now. Mm -hmm. There's anyway. stuff from my wedding sitting right there. Parts of the nacho cheese fountain. Uh, from 10 years ago, sitting there and stuff all over the place. A uh, clock from competition with Jay. I can't bring myself to burning your uh, your cheese fountain. Uh, well, I've tried to bring myself to burning your clock, but <laughs> so we're even, I we've, guess. We've used pieces of the cheese fountain. If you recall, when I made the self-watering planters, I used uh, the pumps off of a couple mm. of them. But anyway, um, to start the year off, we thought, well, 
perfect time for us oh. to re replace our clock. So, uh, boy, if you wouldn't mind doing the honors. Sure. We'll see if you can do that. Actually, it has two places to. Uh, this is mount the it. official Markman Breakfast Club broken clock. So the shopsmith clock will come down. It's bound to come show up at another shop of mine, no doubt. And uh, you know, it's a bit smaller, though, isn't it? Uh, just a little. But we're not putting a battery in it. It's, uh, it's, it's just staying there at six o'clock. Glorious. Boy, it's getting a lot of shine. Uh, getting a lot of glimmer on it there too. Oh one. Mm. Okay. Is that any better? No. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's right twice a day. All right. You had a couple of things. Yeah, a couple of things. So uh, we received in the mail a Christmas card. Cool. We don't get Christmas cards. Not usually. This is pretty cool. Uh, this is from Jimmy Chavez. If you recall last year, Jimmy did a painting of us that he sent. Is it is it actually handy? Yeah. Our plan is to have this hung up here in the uh, in the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not a painting. It's what is that? Oh, yeah, it's... that's a painting. This was from last year. Now, since we've lost a little bit of weight since then, maybe you should hold it further from the camera. <laughs> but, so this letter is uh, wax sealed with <laughs> what looks like a Jack Skellington. Jack Skellington sealed. You know what? We can we just cut it open. Yep. Here. No. You know what? I know what. I'm going to use my pocket monkey. Great. Is this the 12th use for the pocket monkey? Should they, should they list this on the site? <laughs> they do list it on the site. Look at that. Look at that. Perfect. All right. It's, uh, it's Santa being uh, pulled in sleigh. Oh, there's no cash. Whoa. No way. Oh my gosh, these are awesome. All right, so. <laughs> so here's what he's done. And I don't know if that one's attached to the, uh, it is. This says, to Scott and Boy, uh, the official printed thing says, may all the magic, warmth, and joy of the holiday season be yours. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Then he wrote on here, to Scott and Boy, hey guys, keep up the awesome videos. I enjoy watching daily and making your your videos a part of my day. Cheers. P.S. I hope you enjoy the artwork. Happy Holidays. He signed it December 2018. And then what he included was a picture of Randy Quaid from from uh, Christmas Vacation. He, he again, is that paint or is that ink? What does he, how does he do this? Uh, this may be a print. It probably is a print no, of. No. No? I don't think so. I think it is. Anyway, Randy Quaid. I don't think, look at the, the ink marks. I don't that, know. That's ink. That's okay. And then, and then John Candy. John Candy, in this case, from Uncle Buck. And, uh, and then here, attached to the card, <laughs> Bill Murray. That's fantastic. <laughs> That is so cool. I I don't know. Wow. Okay, Jimmy, tell us, did you did you draw these individually or is this a print? Because it should be a print. This is something you should be That's printing. Awesome. If you aren't. Thank wow. you. Dude All is right. talented. He's got stuff on Facebook. He puts stuff on on Instagram. Um I'm not sure how active on Instagram. More Facebook. But anyway, wow! All right, it's official. I'm, I'm we, honored that you sent that. We've got to us, so buddy. much shop artwork now that uh, we need need a place to display it. Yeah. You smoked us at all? Yeah. So, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and maybe you caught it on the Aristocob channel. Um, there's a gentleman in the YTPC named Danny Shore, um, who. At one point, uh, his channel started to make a little bit of a turn, and he started reading books on pipe smoking. Hmm. 
and uh, he would just go, hey, chapter one, and he would read. And, and typically he wasn't putting himself on camera, put the camera on his, on his bench or on something that's uh, around him. At one point, I guess he got dinged because there was a TV playing in the background, and that was enough for oh, the YouTube bots. To, copyright. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he started reading a book called The Pipe. It's about a, it's a mid-century, uh, I think it was 1954 was when the book was published. And it's a tough book. Hmm. But uh, he was at the time starting to feel the onset of what we now know as brain cancer. Hmm. And uh, was, was having trouble with, uh, with reading. The text is hard enough to read. You don't need to have brain cancer. It's, right. it's a tough read. It's written very poetically and very flowery. And um, in, in a meetup in uh, Dayton, Ohio with uh, Harriet Herfer and her husband Hugh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hugh and Harriet Herfer, mm -hmm. if you will. They sent uh, some tobacco. Yeah, tobacco they did. They were telling me that uh, uh, along with Sue Dunhill, they had started this project to start reading through that book and uh, to finish mm -hmm. it for Danny. And so uh, I think that they, they had already targeted some folks to read full-on chapters, and so I was lucky to get a little portion. And so the portion I read was uh, How to Empty Your Pipe. Okay. Which I'm reading this book, and while I'm reading it, I'm reading it for the first time, and I'm laughing at it because the guy's really interesting the way he writes. And uh, he, one of the examples is he says, you know, Something you don't want to do is you don't want to beat the pipe. Like you wouldn't want to beat it on your shoe. And there are these little corks and things you can put in an ashtray and hit them. Uh, but he, he said, you know, you want to be careful that, that you don't you don't empty your pipe that way in a restaurant. Otherwise, your waiter will think you're repeatedly calling him to your table. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Anyway, a whole bunch of them have been posted. Um, I haven't seen an official playlist yet. I'm sure there will be an official playlist. Sue has has published within the description of her video, which we will link here, um, at least the starts of that playlist, and I think ultimately she or someone needs to create the official mm -hmm. YouTube playlist. But I, I got a copy of the book after reading my part. I really like it. So open that to any page and, and read half a page, and you'll see what I mean. And read it out loud, if you would, please. Boy is what we call a reader. I mean, I can read. Where's the page about corncob pipes? <laughs> it's actually in there. I know. Choice of a briar. Choice it mentions of maize. Tobacco. Maize. Okay. Uh, filling the pipe. Having passed in review whatever concerns the pipe, we now find ourselves faced with three definite and concrete matters. The pipe we have chosen, a packet of tobacco, and the flame that is to serve as a liaison officer to bring these two essential factors into communication one with the other. We are to see how the contents should be packed in the container, how it should be lighted, and then smoked with the maximum of delight to the gustatory, oh my goodness, <laughs> gustat, gustatory olfactory nerves. As this book is written as much for amateurs as for professional smokers, for novices as for hardened practitioners, it has been thought best to support ourselves furnished with a briar that has already been smoked. Instructions on seasoning the pipe will be given later. So, as you see, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough book to read. But I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed my part. I enjoyed listening to Danny reading his part. I, I want to own this book, so I went on eBay and found a, a clearly a used copy. I love this picture, actually, that uh, shows how to use a nail as a pipe rack. <laughs> that's a pipe rack. Yeah. Oh, that's This funny. is a section on the pipe rack. Oh, yeah, there's an eyelet. Use or an, an eye bolt or eye screw. Two eye screws. That's funny. Moral advantages, moral advantages of the pipe rack. Okay. What's a mor what is a moral advantage? Of a pipe rack. There can be no doubt that it is more attractive to look at pipes in a rack than to see them jumbled in a box. One of the inconveniences of this latter state of confusion is that the smoker has to examine each separately when choosing one to smoke. The pipes are not ranged in rank before the eye as in a rack, where a single glance suffices to pick out the one wanted. Uh, I don't know. 
Talks about clay pipes. You know the the eye screw is not a bad idea actually. That'd no. be super easy to build a uh, to build a, a pipe rack that way. Yeah. There is a psychological moment when the exactly proper pipe in the rack presents itself for smoking. But if it be in a box, one has to rummage about, always with the risk that one of its companions, less suitable for the moment, however excellent it may be in itself, may be taken after all. No such mistake can be made with a pipe rack. On going off to work or for pleasure, there is need only to cast one's eye over the panoply of 50 pipes or so in the racks to pick instantly on the one, the one and only pipe, with its mute and inexplicable appeal, its cry that it wants to be smoked. Don't pick the wrong pipes, kids. Put them in a rack. That's, that's interesting. That's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you can get this book uh, on, on eBay. I'm sure you can find it on Amazon as a used book. Um, who knows? Maybe it's still Kindle available. version? Ebook version? I don't know, but I, I, what, I, what I was looking for when I bought this, I was looking for the original publication, the very first mm. print, which I, uh, the first print, I think, was in French. Mm. Uh, but anyway, I, I got e. the oldest one I could get, and though the dust cover's in bad shape, 1954. Pretty old. A couple years old. That's neat. It's just, I loved the project. I think it's a great idea. I love that we're not only supporting Danny, but it's an interesting topic. Mm -hmm. And um, while it may be tough to read, you can listen to other people reading it. And uh, Cane Rod Piper has read a chapter of it. I know that, uh, that Harriet read a chapter of it. A whole bunch of folks. Um, uh, Simon from, uh, is it London Calling, I think it is? No, sure. Simon. Anyway, Simon. I subscribe to Simon. You'd think I would know these uh, YouTube names. I don't, I don't know the names of the channels. I just see them in my subscription feed. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to another topic, but we'll talk about that next, next week. Cool. How about that? Sounds great. We're endeavoring to keep these more shorter this year. You tell us what you think about that idea. Yeah. Uh, well, then, if there's nothing else, what do you think of the tobacco? It's fine. It's you know what. I think it's going to take me a couple episodes to get back into pipe smoking. I didn't. I've not smoked since Tobacco Advent, mm -hmm. and so I can I can tell I'm a little bit rusty. I think the tobacco is fine. So now, see, um, I haven't smoked for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So you got me beat. So what do you think of the tobacco? I like it. You know what it, it what it tastes like to me. It, it tastes like um, Lane BCA with with just a little bit of a casing or flavoring mm -hmm. in it, which is not a bad flavor at all. Lane BCA is not a bad tobacco at all. Yeah. So that's what it tastes like to me. Yeah. Let it seems less sweet. Yeah. To so Dan, thanks again. Thank we appreciate you. the support, the attempt at supporting Tobacco Advent this past year, and uh, again, one more time for everybody who did. Yes. Thank you. And uh, we're going to continue smoking through the pet tobaccos we didn't get to, and you'll see those in the coming weeks. Yep. Make it a great week, and we'll see you again next week. See ya.